Hi, whoever has joined us, thanks for joining me this evening. Welcome to Acupressure with Essential Oils. I'm going to wait another minute just to make sure that anybody who wants to hop on can hop on. But I have a very extensive uh, presentation tonight so that um, to give you a real good wide scope of what acupressure with essential oils is. So I hope that you'll get to really walk away with a lot of information that I know you will. <laughs> so um, we'll just start in another minute. Okay. Well, I'm Marina Tikasera, and I am uh, here tonight to give you more information about acupressure with essential oils. I first want to give a big shout out to Courtney and Oil Life. Thank you for having me. It's really exciting to be here. Um, who am I? I am Marina and I am a classical five element acupuncturist. I think, let me, let me fix this. I think there's something wrong with this. Hold on, sorry. Where's, uh, all right, I'm sorry. I just want to give you the full slide, the full presentation. Here we go, slideshow. Here we go, that's it. There it is. Okay, here we go. Now for real, what happened? So thank you. <laughs> and who am I? I am a classical five element acupuncturist and a classical five element acupuncturist actually are uh, focused on the acupuncture with the background of the ancients who really looked at acupuncture and the meridians and the points from the emotional standpoint. And people are really emotional beings, and they really look at the spirit and the emotion of the person. So that's what classical five element acupuncturists do. We focus on that aspect of the person. I'm also a certified aromatherapist and an author. I just finished a book called Acupressure with Essential Oils. And the other thing that I am is a human, doing the best I can to make this a happier and healthier place. And thank you for joining me. I think somebody just join. So thank you. So here's my book. I just launched in uh, April 30th. And when Courtney invited me to appear on the show, I had no idea that she was actually carrying my book in her warehouse. And she said that she just sold out like two days after she announced it. So thank you all very much for getting very excited about the book and grabbing it tonight. I'm going to show you some points and oils that are in the book, as well as a few that are not. Um, my journey began when I was first introduced to essential oils by my doTERRA rep, and I was so excited. I didn't think much of them at, at first, but I was just loved them, and they were delicious. And um, I just felt like I could smell them all day, every day. They were fantastic, and I'm sure everybody else here feels the same way, and that's why we're doing this, right? Well, as when I, as soon as I got my oils, I thought, well, now what? <laughs> I got all these oils and um, I got overwhelmed. So I'm, I was not sure what to do, but I did learn from my rep that I could actually do things um, with them that were connected to Chinese medicine. And they had the, actually a very similar, uh, if you combined the, combined the oils, you could actually have similar effects as some of the major Chinese formulas, which blew me away. Um, but it made sense when I thought about it because Chinese herbs are herbs, and essential oils are part of herbs and plant family. So I began to really experiment and work with my patients with the oils. I learned how that they were actually able to interact with the acupoints and could produce even better results than just acupressure alone. So I worked with my patients and found that indeed, the more the di that was true and the more uh, issues that they had, I could actually work with the different oils and try different, different combinations to help them through a lot of their issues. The results were actually amazing. Um, and tonight I'm gonna share 
with you um, some of the oil and acupoint combinations that I've used to give them long-term and short-term uh, relief. There's another thing that I learned about uh, when I was writing all of this up was that I, as a doTERRA rep, could actually put, use the essential oils to, I mean, my book and the information to help other distributor reps and reps um, teach and help potential clients and understand what they could use the oils for in the here and now. So it was very helpful for me to have a, a resource to give to people that they could say, okay, I've got these oils now and this is what I can do. So it's been really great. And a lot of people have actually bought a number of books to give to their potential clients. So it's been really great. Um, the three key points that you will learn tonight is what is acup acupressure with essential oils. There are many visions that people have in their head and um, I will kind of help you kind of clear that up. What is the basis of acupressure? chi and how does it work and the a third point will be essential oils and acupoints how to apply them and the uh, relief using them for relief for stress digestion immune and focus those will be our um our focus tonight because i was thinking about back to school and those are all the issues that um, we're going to run into as parents as well as just normal life but uh these can be actually focused towards the kids and ourselves to help us get through the next few months. So what is acupressure with essential oils? Um, I call it aroma acupressure. And the basic premise is that essential oils that are um, being energetically just as active as acupuncture points have the ability to stimulate the acupuncture points in a similar way as needles, which is pretty amazing, right? How does that do, do that? The essential oils actually provide like a content of information to the point that suggests a particular therapeutic action and that resonates with the acupoint. So if you think about the essential oils, they are able to do many things. They have diff different chemical constituents and all those chemical constituents have different effects on the body. So though that content of information is actually um, taken in by the body in a different way. And when it's working with the acupuncture points or acupoints, they stimulate the acupoints according to their own inherent action as well. And then they work together. Acupuncture needles uh, trigger the acupoints regular action, but it doesn't add to them like essential oils does, which is why I love this whole modality. It's really, really amazing. The real key to selecting an essential oil um, or oils that possesses the same function, the real key to making it all work is that you actually find the essential oil that is synergistic with the acupoint. Um, and an oil that will activate that particular point to give you the benefit and the outcome that you want. So there has to be, it's like a lock and key. You really want to have that lock and key working together so that that can open up and stimulate the chi of the body and help you get the outcome and results that you need. The way to do it is really just to apply one drop or two of the essential oil on your finger and hold and press wherever you're going to be on the acupoint for about one to three minutes. I'm gonna go over that more in, in a bit. So I got a little video I'm gonna show you. And with the basics of acupuncture and acupressure. I, um, since I'm an acupuncturist, I'm gonna talk about acupuncture. But um, 
it's pretty easy to grasp how acupressure and acupuncture work. They're based on the same theory. Acupuncture, of course, is needles, and they're tiny hair-thin needles. For any of you who don't know about it, but the, the needles are about like a hair, really, and they actually fit into the um, skin. They go into the skin through the pores, so they don't break the skin, and a lot of people are needle-phobic, um, and because of that fear, like hy hypodermic needles, but it's not the same at all. Because they're solid, they go in and fit through the pores, and then they can go get they can go get the chi, which is uh, really um, stimulating stimulating that chi. Um, and what that does is that actually opens up the channels and stimulates the life force and lets your chi flow. I'm going to explain that more a bit too. So what does this have to do with acupressure? Acupressure and acupuncture are the same theory, and it is based on chi and the meridians. And the only thing is the mode, the acupuncture is the needles, and acupressure is your fingers. Some people like to use some tools, but I like, in this case, we're going to use our fingers because it goes with us wherever we go when we can use it. So let's for, go talk about, let's bring back to the basics, chi or chi or he or prana. They're all different spellings for the exact same thing. Chi is the life force that allows us to move our bodies, our organs, to perform our different functions, our breathing, our circulating, our circulation, digestion, thinking. It's the life force, the sun, the force, and energy that comes in that gives us life. Without, the bod without chi, the body is just a lifeless corpse. And as you can imagine, all of nature, all of the universe is powered by chi. And that gives us that life, right? So the way the chi gets into our bodies is through the meridians. And the meridians are associated with all our organ systems. And they go, as you see, the bladder, all these, and lung, liver, all these major organs that we have are where the chi that animates us is flowing through. So when we're working on acupuncture or acupressure points, we're working on these lines um, with points along these lines to help them along specific organ systems um, depending on what our problem is. And then what are acupoints? Now, like we said, along the meridians are those acupoints. They are, oops, uh, they are described as portals and you can see like these little dots, these are all the points along the channels. And they reach the river of chi within the meridians. So these points actually have more energy in them than the whole line, than the whole along the line, than the whole line or different parts on the line. And by inserting a needle into the acupoint, the acupuncturist can stimulate that chi in the meridian. And then each point has certain actions that when triggered begin the healing process. And each one is different, and each one has a name. Uh, it's various names that are pretty, pretty profound. Some of them are very spiritual. Some are very simple based on where they are. Um, and some are really um, just physical uh, and more mythological and symbolic. So how does chi deal with the essential oil, with essential oils? Well, herbal medicine, thus essential oils, are carriers of vital chi, and they interact with the individual's vital chi, and thereby bringing an energetic balance and healing, of course, right? Duh. But all that energy that comes in life force into, the, into our planets and to us is into our plants and thus our essential oils. And we're unlocking that chi by connecting it to the action. Now, um, I just could go give you a little bit of a something you probably many of you already know, but the way the body responds to through inhalation, through essential oils, is through inhalation and touching with the skin. So it goes directly to the brain and the limbic system through our inhalation. And so it, even when we're doing the acupressure with essential oils, we're going to inhale it as well as um, put it on the point. And when we do topical application, um, it's really it's it's really easy to absorb into the bloodstream. 
It disperses throughout the body systems. And then when the oil is applied to acupoints with pressure, it travels through the meridians even faster, providing quicker responses. And it's amazing to me, it's, it's how much like putting a, the right oil on the point, you can really feel the distinction and the difference of what happens to that point. And um, no, because I know the points, I, and then I know the oils, and I have actually tested, like I said, I've tested uh, many of them. And so even though some oils have a similar function to an oil, not all of those oils worked on that particular point. So we're going to go through some of those. OK, you ready? Let's do this. Um, I just have to give you the basics. So have these oils on hand. Go get your bergamot, very, very important, a huge one. Peppermint and lemon, those are like the foundation of every, every oil person in the planet, right? The other ones you need are frankincense, eucalyptus, rosemary, and ginger. So have those on hand if you can. Now we'll get into applying the acupressure. So there are many different ailments that require different acupoints and oils. Um, and of course, it's some acupoints require different amounts of pressure. So like um, as a general rule of thumb for physical pain, such as muscular tightness, it will require a little more pressure, probably the most pressure of all. Um, but listen to your body and do what feels right because not all points are created equal and not all ailments and situations are created equal. So uh, I would say for um, most things, other issues, and like the ones that we're going to be covering tonight, um, is will require a strong pressure, but not one that's going to hurt yourself. Not like as hard as muscular, unless you're going to need to do muscular. But the rule of thumb really is kind of comfortably uncomfortable. So just enough to know that you're actually working on the point. You're like, oh, yeah, OK. For, for these, it's real hard. It's obvious it's going to be hard. But for, let's say, something in here, you don't have to press so hard. Or in something in your abdomen, you're not going to press hard. You're going to press so that you know that you're doing something, but not enough to make your body seize up in, in pain. You don't want to add more pain. You're trying to get rid of pain. So. Uh, by pressing those points just strong enough to where you know you're doing something and feeling it out um, so that it's like, OK, my body knows that I'm doing something. So that, that's the thing about pressure. And um, keep that in mind. Again, listen to your body. If you're going to do this also with children, go lighter first. Um, children are way more sensitive, and they don't need a whole lot of um, acupressure is great for you know us adults, but when you do it on children, their body doesn't necessarily respond better. So I, it's sort of like pressing on a, a computer key. Use that and then holding it, holding that point, and pressing it just a little, so that they feel comfortable and healing. And the child will also tell you. But holding those will also feel help them kind of release, and you'll feel it. As we go through, you'll you'll start to feel it and get a sense of how much pressure should you should use. I get a lot of questions about that. So how long do you hold the acupoint? It's between one and three minutes. So that is really the rule of thumb, and not less than one by any stretch. And three minutes is really optimum, especially for muscles um, and that are like pain in the joints or in um, different areas that you can handle it, it's really great to hold that for a, a while. So the first ailment or thing that we're gonna, I'm going to cover tonight and that we can do interactively is uh, quick calm. That's in Chapter 5 in my book. And I love it because it is, it is exactly what it says. It is quick to make you calm. And so if you have bergamot, get your bergamot and breathe that in. Of course, you're going to breathe that in. Who doesn't love bergamot? Um, and, and then 
get, get your pinkies wet. Just get your pinkies wet. And then, and then on, you're going to stick it in a point in your ear, which is, you can see in the picture here, uh, it's called Shen Men, which is Heaven's Gate. And it's, it's really a master point in one of the ears. And it's, it's, there's like three, five major master points in the ear. And in fact, the whole body is in the ear. You have the kidneys, the lungs, the liver, the spine, everything is in your ear. So just doing ear acupuncture or even just massaging your ear is pretty powerful and healing. Um, but um, using bergamot on Shen Men is really helps the body to calm down. It just goes, it's so funny because when I was in um, school, I was, I was needle phobic and we were in needling class learning how to needle each other. And um, I was just like, oh, and the, <laughs> the teacher just came in and stuck a needle in my ear and my whole body just went <laughs> and I was able to, to deal with getting needled by um, my students, my, you know, my cohort were, who weren't um, very well versed in needling quite yet. So that really helped. And I've also had a number of patients who have just reduced their stress like that. Um, one was actually in the middle of an anxiety attack. I just grabbed the bergamot and then put it in his ear and he just stopped mid-track, mid, midway. He was shocked. I was shocked. It was fantastic. It really made me believe it more than I uh, had already, but to see it in action is just, it's, it's really, it's really powerful. So um, putting the oil on the bergamot can shift your anxiety and um, have a really powerful influence in treating conditions like pain and, and then helping you sedate. It's even good in treating addiction and um, inflammation. There's a number of ear points that are actually great for treating addiction. And um, that's another type of lecture, but it's, it's really powerful. Addiction to anything, it starts to help take away the craving. And I've been trying and actually working with some essential oils on those points to, to help that. And it seems to be working. I've got a little more work on it, but it's, it's really awesome. So get some bergamot and stick your fingers in your ears. It's, it's great. And it works beautifully. So uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, um, digestion. And this isn't a science class, but uh, digestion is, of course, such a big part of our life and how we feel and our health. It's the, it's the center of, of our health. So um, it's funny to me because I get a lot of, when I ask my patients about how their digestion is, Many answer, uh, yeah, my, my digestion's good. I poop daily. And I think, oh, well, yeah, that's great. But although it's a part of digestion, clearly it's the last part and actually the result of a good or bad digestive process. So just a quick oversimplistic overview of what the digestion is. It starts the moment you put something in your mouth. Um, actually, it could start when we smell something really good, but let's say for the mouth and putting that in there, swallowing, going down the esophagus, then to the stomach, down to the intestine, down to the you know stomach and into the um, intestines, and then the colon. That's super simplistic. It's not taking into consideration all the all the physiological and chemical issues that are happening, but it's just to give you an idea that um, it's important to understand what, is, what it is that your issue is so that you can choose the right oil and the acupoint. Because if you're going to do something that's in the esophagus or that's something that's in the colon, they're going to be two different, two different things. And um, we want to really kind of figure that out. Um, so one of the major common digestive issues um, is GERD or heartburn, heartburn and GERD. And really that is about, you know, the, the esophagus meets the stomach and there's a whole, there's a, a door there and that door is supposed to close the minute the food goes through the esophagus and into the stomach. Well, sometimes it doesn't close and then you get acid and acid reflux. 
And that's when you get that awful taste of like, oh God. So it's such a common, um, common issue. And in Chinese medicine, we talk about wanting the qi to flow down, which makes sense, right? Because everything's going down. We want that qi to flow down into the stomach and down into the intestines and want that everything to go. And when something's wrong, qi is going up. So we're spending a lot of energy with that um, moving qi down. And the best points, oh, I got so excited about the points. Here, let's, let's do a quick nausea and stomach aches. Then we'll go to all the points and oils. Um, some of the in internal issues around nausea are headaches, viral infections, heart attacks, severe pain. We've all had something, something along that line in, in our life more severe and not necessarily very severe. But uh, the other external causes are motion sickness, alcohol poisoning, food poisoning, medications. So I'm, you know, it's, there's just way too many things, to, too many issues that are associated with all these internal causes that could be way out of the league for some of the, as, the essential oils and points, at least in this, this conversation. But the, um, there's not really one or even a few acupoints and oils that can remedy all these causes of stomach issues. But what I'd like to do, what I'm going to do is talk about only the food and drink that are the most common causes of stomach aches and the acupoints and oils to give you to address that. But of course, like for alcohol poisoning, food poisoning, um, the best cure is not, is trying not to eat any crap <laughs> anyway. But that's another class. So really kind of trying to keep ourselves healthy and eating right in the first place and prevention. But we do get into trouble, and so here's what we can do. So now um, it's you can kind of get your bellies out and um, feel around for some of these points. I'm going to kind of guide you a little bit. I have a little mannequin, but I'm just going to use the picture here for tonight. It's kind of fun to use her. But anyway, the best points that um, are for these are no surprise. It's on the stomach area. There are also further points down the body that are really excellent as well. But of course, these are all where on the stomach area. We've, we, you have CV12, which is right there, and CV10, right above the belly button. CV12 is about halfway between the sternum, the bottom of the sternum, and the belly button. So halfway between there. I have a really short waist, so it's not very far. But those of you who have really long waists or are tall, um, you'll just go from the belly button up um, or the bottom of the sternum down and try to find the halfway point. It looks almost like a little bit above the waist. That point is excellent for re relieving abdominal cramps and reducing nausea. So that idea of chi moving down, and if you're feeling nauseous, if you have heartburn and stomach aches, all of those things are about the energy moving up, the chi moving up, and you're trying to bring it back down. And so that point is right in the center, and that can kind of open all that, that area to help reduce the nausea and um, even calm the muscles by and reducing cramps. CV12 as well as CV10 are both right there doing, doing that very same thing. So holding those points, you can hold those points with, with like your middle finger and that's, that's that situation where you don't wanna press nearly as deep as you would for a, a tight muscle, right? You would just press so that it's, uh, comfortably uncomfortable just like okay I know I'm doing something and holding that oil there um, and you can even just use your finger both fingers because the points are not too far CV 10 and 12 are not far from each other so you can hold them together with your finger with your index finger and your middle finger and those the oils would be ginger and lemon and ginger it's it's one of it's it's the most popular herb in Asia. And um, it is great for moving the energy of the stomach and warming the stomach 
Chinese medicine does not uh, want any kind of cold foods or water or drinks or ice. They really are frowned upon it because it really, it, it, if you think about anything that gets cold, it kind of stops everything up and makes everything rigid and then the, it can't do its job. It can't, um, it can't digest and move like it's supposed to if it, if it gets cold. It's um, uh, really important for it, for keeping that stomach and the spleen warm. So if you have digestive issues, not only putting ginger on your, on your abdomen um, as an essential oil, but put some in hot water and then hot water with lemon and ginger, the best thing ever for assisting in your digestion and really getting that down. And even doing it in the morning, on a cold morning, will kind of get those gastric juices and digestive juices going and also enhance your immune system because a lot of issues of um, colds or anything start in the gut. So the other two points that you're seeing on the chart are stomach 21 and they're right next to, see right, you know, right there, they're right next to CV12 right here. So CV tw um, stomach 21 on both sides. All points are on both sides except the ones that are in the center of the body. And this is gonna come up in some other stuff. And um, so stomach 21 is very similar to CV12 in that it's, it's along the stomach line and it's gonna help move the energy down, move the food down and help calm the stomach and, and that, whole, that whole gut area. And you know, when you're not feeling good, you hold that area anyway, it's natural. So um, another thing that ginger reduces vomiting travel sickness as well. It has the anti-inflammatory properties and it's an antiseptic as we talked about, but it also has antimicrobial properties. And I love it, you know, when I learned about essential oils and all of their functions, it was just, so funny to me because I go, I went out to the sushi restaurant and then they had ginger and I'm looking at food differently now because it's all the herbs. It's like, oh, ginger. Well, they use ginger with the sushi because sushi is cold. So it's fish is kind of cold in nature. So having the ginger warms the stomach and helps set all digest as well as killing the microbes. Genius, right? And then of course the lemon, which we love. Another point that is very famous is pericardium 6, PC6. And it is here, as you see, and it's between the two tendons. And what you do is you take your thumb and you measure from your wrist one, two, it's hard to do this right, one and two, two thumbs from your wrist. And then at that point, you'll, it'll, it'll be right there. Ooh, I can feel it. So right there, and um, it, it's famous for getting rid of nausea. Uh, I don't know if any of you have had gotten motion sickness of any kind in a boat, a plane, a car, whatever. That is the point. That is the empirical point that people use to get to allay themselves from getting nauseous. In fact, there used to be these bands. Maybe they still sell them. These bands that you could get with elastic bands, and then they had a little plastic plastic dot, and then you just put it on here. So when you go on your trip, you can just hold it there and you just hold that dot there. So that's acupressure. It's it's everywhere, right? So the best oil for that is peppermint. Peppermint is very cooling. Think about when you get you do get nauseous or if you're especially if like in your car you're a car sick or something you're getting nauseous your body heats up so the peppermint helps move that energy and cool cool you down so that the body can start to relax a little bit and find a little bit of homeostasis and of course it's more uplifting it opens everything it's kind of a vasodilator it's going to open everything so the blood can flow can happen and then chi can can be moving it's another point, and, and it's also great for fevers. Let's see. And we're back to ginger again, but stomach 36 is a famous point. This is another one, the, a huge one actually. It's probably the most famous point on the body 
um, or that, and it has been studied by Western medicine the most. And the reason is because it is such a powerful point in stimulating the immune system, helping with digestion, helping with constipation and diarrhea, and um, totally rejuvenating our entire system. Um, it can do so many different things, but I'm going to talk about it in terms of digestion right now. And of course, like we talked about ginger, since ginger can do so many things, it's also great for that point. Um, the name of this point, Stomach 36, is also called Leg Three Mile. And in the old days, 5,000 years ago, pretty old, they could not walk, they just walked mostly. And, um, and when you get tired, they would work on that point. They would put moxa, which is a special kind of herb to burn, it burns, and they would burn that moxa or press it or do needles and stimulate that point. And it, then they would actually be able to walk another three miles. So it tells you how much vitality it gives you. It's a renewal, it's a reinvigoration. And anybody can do that if you're just feeling tired or you're sitting in a meeting and you're bored and tired, you could just work on your stomach 36 and um, start to get, start to get your, your vitality back up again and strengthen yourself. Or if you feel like you're getting sick, you can start to press that too or your stomach aches. That's perfect for it. Now I wanna um, help you locate this point. Um, it's in, if you go to your tibia, the front, the front bone in front of your leg, which is the tibia, the shin bone, and you go to the outside of it, like that, like from the pictures, the outside of the shin bone, and you just move your fingers up along that, and then when you hit to the top of the tibia, you close to the top, it'll start to flare out. The bone goes straight up, straight up, and then flares out. And when that flare out, before that flare out, you feel it start to change to flaring out, and that will be where the point is. It can be a point because that's on the calf, and that's where we move our feet. It's a big muscle there. But as you pull it out, you'll start to feel it. And if you're feeling around, kind of feel around in there, it's a big point. And that is where the point where it is. And you can massage it, and you can also press it. And this is a point that you can actually press hard uh, if you're not in pain, but you can press that pretty deeply and hold that. And, and there it is where I'm getting it. You can um, press that deeply and, and just really feel that point. And putting the ginger on there is so warming and so um, calming as well, and just really gets you back to center. I hope you're trying that. The other oil, which I didn't put up here for this, that was good, is good, is also rosemary. Um, but that will be for later. Oh, and by the way, these points are on both legs. And like I said, all the points are um, on both sides, the same point on each side, except for the ones that are along the center line. So you want to get both, both your legs and you just press both your legs. Press both, your, uh, both the points. On that. Oh, there it is. I did put it. Okay. Now we're going to go to the immune system because we were talking about stomach 36 and the immune system. Uh, there's there's a lot, and all I, I'm doing here tonight is just giving you um, the immune system organs to give you a, just a big broad sense of of it. Um, the main goal, of course, of the immune system is to prevent infection. And it does this by making special cells just for that purpose, and they're T cells. Um, and I, I'm not going to get into the science of it, just the immune system cells, white blood cells and such, T cells. So the only two organs that actually make T cells are the thymus and bone marrow. And, um, or B, well, bone marrow makes B cells, but that makes the immune system cells. Be the rest are for filtering and helping the body 
clear all the debris and and also the, to accept the immune cells, immune stimulating cells. So having that in mind, it's important to know that so that we can actually use the oils on the right places. So the active points for the immune system. Some of these points can correspond to some of the organs. Um, and one is like the thymus right up here. That is the top, at the top up there, right there. At the collarbone, between the collarbones, right below the little divot, that's where the thymus is. That's number CV22. That's called conception vessel is what CV stands for. But it helps for sore throat, which is pretty obvious, right? Makes sense. And um, it's also by the thymus. So the other point then is CV17, which strengthens, whoops, what happened? No, wait, sorry. See, oh, it wants to go. So CV17, which strengthens the lungs, or the chi in the lungs and the chest. They're all associated with the immune system, the chi of the lung, of course, once the lung gets cold in the cold days or it gets hot in hot days, that's really a vulnerable organ. And so strengthening that organ and the energy in that organ is very important. Um, frankincense. Um, who doesn't love frankincense? It's uh, really the best essential oil for uh, immune system. Well, it's not the best. It's certainly up there and can strengthen and, and enhance your immune system. And putting it on the thymus and on CV1722 is really, really quite powerful. Uh, also, a nice something to note with CV17, it's right between the breast and on the sternum. And that is exactly where you know we pray, that whole the picture of praying. It's like we put it on the center of our chest. That's where we're connecting and uh, the left and the right hemispheres of our brain and putting us into one line and being, you know, at peace and quiet. It's called the sea of tranquility. And it's for that reason. It makes sense, right? It's like you put your hands together, you kind of bow and you're quiet. It just puts you into a real quiet, tranquil space. And when we're in that space, that's when we can actually begin to heal. Our body is not fighting all the time and actually can go into a, a more healing response. The frankincense helps us to get into that meditative state because of its wonderful high high vibration frequency. Now we can go to this. So I have a little. So that now we're back to stomach thirty six. I'm showing you a different picture so that you can see how it goes up the legs through the tibia and right to there, right at almost where the tibia turns right there so let's see oh yeah i got my little stars and my little stars yay okay so i love these points and again another function of stomach 36 is to increase the immune system by strengthening the spleen and strengthening the stomach and enhancing and strengthening the bone marrow which is where the immune cells are you know manufactured and strengthening the spleen and the stomach, as you know, lately, so much talk about so much of our health starts in the gut. And by strengthening all everything in our stomach, we can keep our immune system up. So I hope if there's nothing else tonight that you come away with, stomach 36 is, is the powerhouse. The powerhouse point and using frankincense, or if you want to use a blend, you can. Um, there's On Guard, of course, and if any of you make your own blends that are for immune system, um, for immune strengthening, you can absolutely use that on Stomach 36. Um, and then again, press it. Even press it on your kids and let them before school or something on top of everything else you have to do. But it's, it's great for keeping you strong. Another couple of immune system supporter points are um, Li4 and lung 7. Um, Li4, right there, strengthens the chi and the immune system. It has its own mechanics of how it does that, but it's right here in the web. 
of the, of the hand. And it's called Tiger's Mouth or Great Valley. And really, if you press that point, you can, you can press that point hard. Press that point hard and you can feel it. It hurts, right? Yeah, it hurts. So uh, it's, really, it's really like one of the best pain points you can have for upper body pain. You press that point, you stimulate that point, and it can help really reduce pain, not only along the whole arm, along the whole arm and up, but this channel goes all the way on, up through the elbow, through the shoulder, up to the, up to the side of the neck, up to the jaw, and then up right here, past the teeth, and into the nose, and uh, right beside the nose to the sinuses. So anything that's along the way, shoulder, neck, I mean, elbow, shoulders, neck, jaw, mouth, teeth, and nasal sinuses, all those things um, can be affected by LI4 and helped considerably. So press that point for anything. And again, it's when you're just sitting around. If you're, if you're sitting around watching TV and you, you're not feeling so great, just press, press massage it. Just, just give yourself a good massage and put some eucalyptus on it and um, you won't be getting a cold. At least it'll, it'll increase the odds of you not getting one to help you know, increase your immune system and anything we can do these days, right? You don't want to bring home, you try to bring home anything and you don't want to have to bring home anything to deal with it. So press that point. And then the other one is lung seven and that strengthens lung chi and relieves cold and flu symptoms. And that one is about, I, I don't, it goes, it's about three thumbs. We did two in here, it's like one, to three thumbs right along this bone along the thumb. And you can see it here. So it's easier to see on him. So you see the thumb and it goes all the way up in that bone right there. And it's radius, it's right there. And you'll see if you feel it, you can if you run your hand up along that way, it'll, it'll, there's will be a little divot Sometimes it's not so obvious. Mine is not very obvious. Some people it's, it's like, whoop, they hit a speed bump. But um, others, it's not so obvious. So use your th thumbs. Thumbs are great. One, two, three. Three times up and you'll, you'll, you'll get it. I'm going to actually have to use my model next time so we can get those better. But using eucalyptus, breathing, inhaling, it's wonderful and will stimulate the immune system. And eucalyptus, of course, as many of you know, an antiviral, antibacterial, antimicrobial, and um, great for scaring away all sorts of parasites. It's great in the winter, it's great in the summer. I've been using it so much this summer to get rid of bugs, to, to um, keep them away, keep them off. It's my natural off, and it, it works wonders. Okay, so I uh, have been covering a lot of information. I hope you still focus and have attention. But now, um, since it's school time, I wanted to talk a little bit about focus and attention because there's a lot of attention about attention, attention, attention deficit, um, actually a lot of attention on non-attention. But <laughs> focused, there's so many different types, focus attention, shifting attention, sustained attention, selective attention, divided attention. And we, we kind of struggle with a lot of that, especially given our days of you know, technology, we have the technology that we have right now, and it's hard to keep people focused. And um, I really, it's to me, brain health is super, super important. But I'll tell you, without having all of the other things in place that we talked about earlier, your stress, your digestion, and your immune system, if you don't have those uh, helping you or working for you in, in your benefit or in good shape, it's hard to focus. And so the, those other three are really important for helping you enhance your focus and attention and that of your children. Um, so 
I, I love this when I was looking at looking, making this up. The, atten the human attention span, really kind of a, a fun aside. Uh, we had books before, of course, well, this says 1800 BC, of course, that's silly, but uh, we went movies and then in the 1920s, and then we had TV in about 19, no, 1950s, TV came out. And, um, and then, of course, the 90s when we had the internet come out. And our attention span has gotten, gone tanked. And um, it's, pretty, it's pretty scary and sad, but there's things that we can do for that. And one is to read books, just like we used to, kind of get away from that technology, get away from the blue lights, and just kind of sit and be quiet. Be quiet with your essential oils, too, right? And then the other thing is to get outside. Be outside. It, it's a lifestyle. All of this stuff that we're talking about is really a lifestyle of um, having a healthy lifestyle and mindset. So uh, the major part of the brain that is responsible for memory acquisition, hearing, and visual perception is the temporal lobe, the temporal lobe right there. And it's right the one by your ears right there, as well as on the top of your head. There's a huge point up here uh, called governing the gut GV100, uh, 100 meeting points, sorry. I will um, get to that in a second. But it's interesting to note that there are a number of points along here that are for brain and memory. I didn't know how the Chinese knew that. That's pretty amazing that they figured that out. They didn't know all that brain stuff back then. But there are a number of them there, and they're actually quite profound. And there's some points that really affect the hormones as well. So oils on that point, putting oils for focus on those points, or even just massaging them is great. So the acupoint and oils for focus, one of them is here, and memory is up here. Like I said, it's called GV, uh, GV20, governing vessel number 20. And the way to find this point is to start at the top of your ear and the apex there, and then kind of come up, you know, say kind of come up here to the top. And you just put your fingers there, and, and then it's going to be right sort of at your crown. And it's the point where the fontanelles meet, you know, when the baby is, is born with the young baby, they have that soft spot. Well, that is the point. That soft spot closes, of course, and allows our, as we get older, and then the bones come together. But there is still that, that, that opening energetically. And so that point, if you stimulate it, is, is very powerful for many things, but it, it stimulates brain function and makes sense. And it's opening the crown chakra and allows our connection to an inspiration. And that makes sense. It's the top, right? The top is going straight up. And it also assists with our connection to our higher self and the divine and all that is. It helps with helping us feel more expansive and allowing ourselves to grow in, in, into the oneness of ourselves. So it's a very spiritual point, near and dear to my heart and to my head. And um, I do it I do it often trying to focus. On a more uh, physical level, this point can actually help with um, incontinence because if the energy of this point is up. So if you're pressing this point, you're actually pressing that and stimulating the energy of the chi up. And that goes to the center of our body all the way down even to our, our organ systems. So just pressing that point, and, and if there's like collapsed bladder or uh, incontinence, um, just press that, add that to the repertoire of some of the things you do to help that. But it's, it's really good for lifting. And as far as the lemon is concerned, lemon, of course, is great for promoting logical thinking and clearing confusion. Lavender, which I didn't put here, but it's also good for relaxing and calming when we're too much in our heads. Lavender is good for practically everything. And it's also the color there. Also, you can use lavender on the third eye, which is really good for um, 
helping us calm down and opening us up to the possibilities. So I hope you're feeling that point because it's, it's really deeper. Another acupoint, another couple acupoints, which is I just went to um, the other live, is Clary Sage on July and June 24. So um, the, this is called Yin Tong, and the one on the forehead is called GV24. It's actually the name of it is Ancestral Hall. Um, of spirit. <laughs> Ancestral Hall of Spirit. And it's a place where spiritual connection and a spe of spiritual connection and receives light and illumination for an inner source. So this is kind of like, isn't this where the unicorn horn came out of their head? That's pretty kind of cool. So the unicorn, yeah, I just thought of that. Anyway, um, we receive light and illumination. So Putting clarity sage, yeah, getting clarity on that point brings a, cl to a clear sense of being, a total sense of being, opening us up to feeling protected and to our, uh, our true self. It helps problem solving and clearing mental fog. Both of these points, clarity sage on both these points, you can't, it's, it's, you can't lose, it's totally great. So holding these points just like this, with the clary sage, oh my god, it's so sweet. I hope you're doing this because it's just, it's lovely. And and calming too, right? You just kind of, okay. And then that's where you can make decisions. That's where you can begin to make, have those difficult conversations after you've come to that place where you're like, ah, just calm so you can see clearly and you're not going to make or say things that you're going to regret. Right, so hmm, fantastic. One more. We got, I think, one more set. Yeah, one more. So focus and memory again, and this is now in the back of the head. So we've covered around. We're just going around the whole head and the brain. Um, GB twenty. It's gallbladder twenty. It's. Uh, I love that little. <laughs> so um, those points are. Um, really great for releasing neck tension. Makes sense, it's right there at the, at the base of the skull and where the neck meets. And it's, it's where, you know, because all that tension happens, when you're pressing on that point, you can really allow the blood to flow again. So if the blood's flowing to your brain, you can think. There, um, it's referred to as the wind gate. And that's because it's the most vulnerable to wind and if left uncovered on windy days, you're going to get a cold, right? And that's why we all love scarves when it's really cold outside. It's on the gallbladder channel, and the gallbladder is really one. It's it's on the liver channel, liver and gallbladder. They're really about aspiration and inspiration, and what we want to do, and clear vision for the future. And it's really these points. These points right here are really um, close to the close to the occipital lobe and, and to the optic nerve in the brain, close to that area. So it's going to kind of go straight up to the eyes. And it'll help you see, get some direction, and be able to put some aspiration in, into action. You know, it's really having a motivation. And the perfect oils for that are going to be peppermint and rosemary. You can layer them on, or you can use one or the other, whichever, whichever if you don't have them both. Um, Peppermint, of course, is a favorite of mine, and it helps the brain to relax and the nervous system to relax so that one is open. Now, peppermint, it's very strong, and of course, on children, make sure that you dilute, 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 dilute. Only one drop is necessary to, to do the trick, so dilute them. Um, and that goes for all the oils. I mean, just, I believe in diluting. Um, you can get a lot of mileage out of it. it. But peppermint helps one get motivated again, and it can enhance self-confidence. And this really, I believe, is due to its upward and moving energy. You know, it's, it's, it's upward. It's like, oh, oh, 
And so you feel uplifted and awake and that oil is up here. It's just going into that point where it's uplifting. You know, you want to go up. It's going up the head. And so you're clearing the bottleneck, basically. And the rosemary is really excellent for restoring and regulating. It can help the autonomic nervous system restore um, and restore, helps the autonomic nervous system, sorry, and can restore mental and physical fatigue. It enhances memory and concentration and also helps with um, adrenal fatigue. Actually, if, for adrenal fatigue, not only there, I would actually put it on the, on the, um, on your stomach 36, or even in the back around where the kidneys are. That's another class. Uh, it's also great for cerebral hypertension, rosemary. And there, it, as you know, all these oils have many different properties, but I'm using it in this case for focus and memory. It's very stimulating and opening and um, helps move the liver and gallbladder because gallbladder and liver are associated. So it's all, all moving and moving the chi. All these are factors on keeping us well and um, helping us concentrate and as well as remembering things that are important. So um, I don't know about you, but I kind of feel better after pressing all these points. <laughs> I didn't even do the oils and I feel good. So uh, that, really, that really sums up my class for this evening. And I'm so excited that I had this opportunity to, to work with you all. Um, if you have any questions, I don't know, does anybody have any questions? If you do, um, you can call me, uh, you can text me or email me at marina at oilsensations.com. My website is oilsensations.com and you can find more tips and tricks on there. I'm, I'm always working on that website and I'll be doing some events and some more webinars and um, you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Facebook is Marina Wellness, which is my acupuncture program, my acupuncture practice, and then acupuncture with essential oils, and then Instagram, acupuncture with essential oils. I hope that I've answered any questions. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, it's really, so exciting having you here. And if there's anything else you need, just contact me. So a big shout out and thank you to Courtney and Oil Life for hosting me. And I hope to see you again in the next webinar.